Hey guys, welcome back to another video on this channel. Today I'm going to show you Security Craft for Forge. This is a mod that adds many new blocks which will enable you to build your own maximum security facility with sentries, retinal scanners and more. You want to know how this mod works? Then let's get started. This video is structured in different chapters. If you are searching for a specific block or tool, please take a look at the description or comments, where I will leave the timestamp for every single block and tool included. First of all, some information about the concept and basic functions of this mod. Pretty much every block in Security Craft is unbreakable for players and has a specific owner associated with it, which is the only player who can break the block using a special tool called Universal Block Remover or access its interface and change settings. Many blocks which have specific functions also ignore the owner, like a sentry turret which won't attack the owner but all other players if not configured differently. You can also protect the building blocks of your base. The universal block reinforcers can turn vanilla blocks into the security craft variants, which are unbreakable and indestructible in survival mode without special tools. To do this, right click the universal block reinforcer and put the vanilla block into the top slot, then close the interface. You can also simply left-click the block with the item. To convert a reinforced block back to its normal vanilla version, use the bottom slot, which is only available for level 2 and level 3 reinforcers. You can use the level 1 reinforcer 300 times, level 2 2700 times, and the level 3 reinforcer has unlimited uses. If you want to break a reinforced block, right-click with an universal block remover on it. And don't worry, only the person who placed down the block and who is the owner can destroy it, so other players can't destroy your reinforced blocks and your base is protected. If you want to change the owner of a block, use the Universal Owner Changer, which enables you to do that. Rename the item in an anvil to the name of the new owner, then right-click one of your blocks and it will change the owner to the name you gave the item. Also worth mentioning is that your reinforced blocks can only be pushed by reinforced pistons and not by vanilla pistons. Also, in order to push a reinforced block with a reinforced piston, you have to be the owner of both blocks, not only one of the two blocks. That is especially important if you want to build for example a piston door using these blocks. The reinforced piston is also special regarding the transfer of the ownership. Because for this block, after you use the Universal Owner Changer, the new owner has to validate the ownership change by right-clicking the block. If you play on a server with friends, and if you want to share the ownership of your blocks with each other, you can do that, using a function in the configs. This mechanic will cause all players on the same vanilla scoreboard team to be treated as the owners of any block placed by any player of that same team. So if you are together in a vanilla scoreboard team, whatever block you or your teammates place, all team members will be owners of that block. Let's move on to all the other features. Before showing you all of the blocks and their functions, I will quickly explain the modules. These items are really important in this mod, because you can configure many of the blocks with them and alter their functions. There are multiple modules. In order to apply them on a block, sneak and right-click with them in your hand on the block. You can remove modules using the Universal Block Modifier, which is probably one of the most important tools in Security Craft, as it is used to customize various blocks. Right-click a block with the item to open the customization interface. You can then insert and extract the modules as you want to customize how that block functions. Also, as I mentioned before, many blocks included in Security Craft don't affect or are not affected by the owner. For example, they are not tracking him or not reacting to him. You can use the block modifier to configure whether a block should ignore the owner, meaning any functionality it has will not work for the owner. The item also gives access to further options. You can disable a block completely and more. Each block has different settings pertaining to its functions. The allow list module removes players from a block's effect or password checking, like for password protected furnace. Right click with that module in your hand to add the player names. The deny list module adds players to a block's effect or prevents them from using a certain function of the block, so it does the opposite of the allow list. You can add players the same way as with the allow list. The disguise module disguises certain blocks when added to them, so you can make a block look like another block. The harming module adds damage properties to a block, so you can add it to a laser for example, so the laser damages players. The redstone module adds power properties to a block, 
for example adding it to a laser block, will cause a redstone signal when a mob or player walks through the laser. The smart module upgrades the range of functions of a block. Adding it to a block change detector for example allows it to only lock changes of a specific type of block or adding it to password protected blocks will add a cooldown after an incorrect attempt. The speed module allows some of the blocks to operate faster than usual, like the protector block attacking more frequently. And the storage module upgrades a block's inventory or its functions, like enabling an inventory scanner to store the items it takes from a player. Let's move on to the blocks. There are password protected blocks. You can obtain these blocks by placing down a vanilla block, like a chest or furnace, and right-clicking it with a key panel. When placing down these blocks for the first time, you will need to enter a code. After doing that, every time you access that block, you will have to enter the password. You can also allow for players to access them without the password, using the allow list module. The keypad, which is made by crafting a key panel and right-clicking with it on a frame block, works similar to the password protected blocks, but will emit a redstone signal after you entered the correct code. Same goes for the keypad door, which will open upon entering the correct code. If you want to change the passcode of a passcode protected block you own, you can use the universal key changer. Right-click the block with the key changer to open the interface, then type in the new passcode you want. So, due to the fact that the password protected blocks can't be destroyed or accessed by unauthorized players, they are quite safe. Although, there's one way people might still be able to access these blocks, using the code breaker, which is a really powerful and expensive item. It can crack the code of any keypad, password protected chest and so on, by right clicking on it. You can use the item only a few times and it has a 1 in 3 success rate, which can be changed in the config if you want to. The retinal scanner emits a redstone signal when its owner looks directly at the front of the block from any visible angle within breaking distance. The scanner door has the same concept. For both, you can also add other players with the allow list. The inventory scanner is used by placing two scanners one block apart facing each other. You can edit the allow distance in the mods configs if you want to. When placed correctly, a laser field should spawn between them. You can right-click one of the blocks and add blocks to the interface. Now, when a player walks through the laser, any blocks or items present in the scanner's interface that are also present in the player's inventory will either be stored, a redstone signal will be emitted, or the player will be blocked from passing through, depending on the scanner setting. The keycard reader is a quite complicated block at the first look. If you insert the correct keycard in this block, it will emit a redstone signal. Right-click the block to configure it. Here you can set the signature of the keycard reader. It is important for the keycard and keycard reader to have the same signature, otherwise the block won't accept the card. Furthermore, keycards linked to the readers of other players will not work for your keycard readers. You can also set for every keycard reader which keycard level it should accept. There are 5 levels of keycards you can craft. You can set that only one specific keycard level should be accepted, or one keycard level and any keycard level above that level. Insert the keycard on the left and press link to connect them. If you want to limit the times a player can use a keycard, combine it in a crafting table with a limited use keycard. You will receive two separate keycards with limited uses, which will be zero at first. Next, open the keycard reader, put the card into the left slot, type in a number and press the arrow right next to it. To reset the settings on a keycard, Put it into a crafting table. The username logger will lock any player's name within three blocks, so this block is pretty useful to keep track of possible secret intruders or thieves. For this block to work you need to power it with redstone. The sentry is a turret to defend your base. It has three modes. Idle, which means it will never attack. Camouflage, which means it will stay hidden until the target comes close after which it will attack and aggressive, which means it will always be active and attack targets. You can also configure if it should just attack hostile mobs, just players or both. To remove the sentry, sneak and right click it. The laser block is used by putting two of them within five blocks of each other. You can edit the allowed distance in the mods configs. When placed correctly, a laser should appear between them. The laser won't do anything on its own, but you can add modules like a harming module to damage players or a redstone module for the blocks to emit a redstone signal when someone walks through the laser. The block change detector detects players breaking and or placing blocks close to it. 
When opening the interface, you can see the detected changes and you can also configure whether it should only track breaking blocks, placing blocks or both. Use a smart module if you only want to detect the change of a specific type of block. The protector will attack any mob in a 10 block radius with lightning bolts every 10 seconds while it's raining or snowing. It needs a clear view of the sky. You can increase the frequency by adding a speed module. The trophy system, which some of you might know from Call of Duty, targets enemy arrows and fireballs and will destroy them from range after a half second charge time. That way you can protect yourself. You can specify which projectiles it should target using the smart module, increase the frequency using the speed module and exclude players using the allow list. The rift stabilizer prevents entities in its vicinity like mobs or players to teleport themselves. Right-clicking the block will allow you to see a list of all detectable teleportation types. You can configure which types of teleportation should be affected using a smart module. The projector projects holographic versions of a block of your choice into the world. While they are projected, you can still pass through them, which can be used to hide for example buildings or an entrance from other players. The range and width of the projection can be changed within the projector's interface. Using security cameras allows you to keep track of all your buildings. Simply place down a camera, then right-click it with a camera monitor to bind it for use. The camera monitor itself is a portable item that lets you view live feeds of up to 30 connected security cameras. Right-click with the item in your hand, select the camera and you can see the video feed. To unbind a security camera, right-click with the camera monitor to open the camera monitor's interface and click the corresponding X button. The motion-activated light will light up when a player is close to the block. The alarm will cause a siren sound effect and flash red when powered by redstone. The panic button looks like a button but works the same way as a lever. Just press it once to activate and press it again to deactivate. The portable radar sends the owner a chat message whenever another player is inside of the radar's detection radius. You can give the portable radar a name by right-clicking on it with a named name tag. You can add a redstone module so it also emits a redstone signal when detecting a player. Fake lava acts the same way as lava but instead of damaging you, it instantly heals you. You can create it in the brewing stand by adding a healing potion into the top slot and up to 3 lava buckets in the bottom slots. Fake water is similar but it will damage you even more than normal lava when you touch it. Put any harming potion into the top slot of a brewing stand and up to 3 water buckets in the bottom slots to create it. The Sonic security system can lock certain security craft blocks and prevent them from being used or interacted with. Right-click a supported block with the Sonic security system, then place it down. Now you can right-click it and start a recording in the interface. Play notes of your choice using a note block, then stop the recording again. Now you won't be able to access the connected block anymore, except if you are playing the tune you just recorded, either via the portable tune player or note blocks. Any time the tune is played nearby the Sonic security system, blocks locked by it will become accessible for a short while. The portable tune player can play a tune that was previously saved to it. To save a tune in the item, right-click a Sonic security system that has already recorded the tune. Now, to play the tune, right-click the portable tune player. To cancel the playback, simply right-click the portable tune player again, or stop holding it. Display cases are able to display an item like an item frame. Enter a code to open the case and afterwards you can place an item in the case by right-clicking the case with the item. To retrieve the item, sneak and right-click the case. To close the case, simply right-click it with an empty hand. Watch out, because while the case is open, anyone can interact with it and take the item inside. Note that you can't rotate items in a display case. The electrified iron fence and fence gate are similar to a vanilla fence, but they are unbreakable and will hurt any mob or player except for the owner when they get in contact with it. You can open the gate only using security craft blocks like a keypad, retina scanner or reinforced lever. The secret sign is like a vanilla sign, but only the owner of the sign and players on the allow list can view the text on it. The block pocket manager is used to create and manage the block pocket which is a special room that can only be entered by its owner and players on the allow list. After placing this block down, open the interface, choose a size and then press show outline. Now you will see where to build the structure. Use reinforced chiseled crystal quartz for the corners, 
correctly oriented reinforced crystal quartz pillars between the corners, and block pocket walls for the floor, ceiling and walls. Click activate and you should see a message in the chat saying the pocket is activated. If you add a storage module to the block pocket manager, you can also have it build the block pocket itself by adding the required materials. This is especially helpful for the bigger pockets. In creative mode, you can also auto-assemble at any time without adding the materials. Let's move on to traps. The cage trap will spawn a cage around any player who touches it, except for the owner. You can also configure this trap for hostile mobs. Mines explode when stepped on by any entity other than creepers, cats and ocelots. Right-click the mine while holding wire cutters to defuse it and to allow you to break it. Right-click it with a flint and steel to re-enable it. You can disguise a mine as many other blocks by combining them in a crafting table. Claymores explode one second after a mob or player walks within five blocks in front of the mine. You can defuse and re-enable it like the other mines. The bouncing betty will launch up into the air and explode when touched. The mine remote access tool allows you to access mines from a distance. Right click on the mine to bind it to the tool. Then right click in the air with the item in your hand to open the interface, which will allow you to activate, deactivate, detonate or unbind any bound mines. The intelligent munition system is a refillable mine holding up to 4 bouncing betties that will target players or hostile mobs which enter its firing radius. Once a mine is launched, the mine will track down the target and explode. You can refill this block by right-clicking it with bouncing betties. Watch out installing these explosives close to your base if you are not using reinforced blocks, as they create a lot of destruction to normal Minecraft blocks. Finally, let's take a look at the remaining tools included in the mod. The taser can be used to shoot at entities, which will affect them with Nausea 2, Slowness 2 and Weakness 2 for 10 seconds. If you sneak and right-click with the taser while having some redstone in your inventory, the taser will double its strength for the next shot. The sentry remote access tool will allow you to access and control sentries remotely. Right-click on a sentry with the item to connect it to the tool. Then right-click with the item in the air to open the tool's interface. Here you can change the mode of each sentry, or of all at the same time. The briefcase is a portable storage unit containing 12 slots. You need a code to access it. Craft it, right-click it to set up the 4-digit passcode to use from then on. Right-click it again and enter the code to access the items. To remove a briefcase's code or change its owner, put the item into your offhand and right-click while holding a universal key changer or universal owner changer in your main hand. The briefcase can be dyed like leather armor. The admins tool is an item that is only obtainable through creative mode and its main purpose is to display information about a security craft block. It will show the owner's ID, name and other information like passcodes and any inserted modules. Before we end this video, some additional information if you want to change the settings of the mod. You can do that by going into the config folder in your .minecraft folder. But you can also install the mod configured and change the settings in-game without editing any files. Simply install the mod, then in your start screen move to mods, security craft and config where you will be able to change the settings like the laser block damage, laser block maximum range, success rate of the code breaker and so on. I hope you liked this video and it could answer all of your questions. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, join my discord server or ask in the official security craft discord server. Anyways, thanks for watching, if you don't want to miss any further reviews, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.